talking about factoring with greatest common factor in quadratic form. In these examples here, we are going to talk about uh, quadratic form. And quadratic form is just, just means that uh, the form of the equation is ax squared plus bx plus c. So that just means that we have a squared term, we have a linear term, and then we have a constant. And this is going to be uh, like we had the practice where we had to um, pick two numbers that had a sum that added to one number and a product that multiplied to another number. So we have to come up with numbers that will multiply to get us to four. So some numbers that we could possibly have that would multiply to get us to four, we could have, or excuse me, negative four. We could have negative two and two. Uh, and then we could have two and negative two, but that, that's not a big deal. And then what's the other one that we could have is, is always the one, whatever the number is and four. So then we could have four and negative one, or we could have negative one, or excuse me, positive one and four. So now the sum or the multi multiply of all these, the product of all these, if we uh, multiply here, negative two times two, that is equal to negative four. 4 times negative 1, that is equal to negative 4. And 1 multiplied by negative 4, that was a negative 4, that is equal to negative 4. So the product for this one, we, have, we want to check to make sure that we can multiply to this. We got it. Now, in order to pick the correct terms that are going to go into our factored form, it also they also have to add to negative 3. So negative two plus two, if we add those together, that's zero. Four minus one, if we add those together, that's equal to three. And one minus four, if we add those together, that's equal to negative three. And so we see that we have the negative four and the negative three. Those are the terms that we need in order to get back to this form here. So our terms are gonna be plus one and minus four. Now we can get into the factored. Uh, whenever we're trying to get factored form of a quadratic, we always want to make it become a binomial multiplied together. So the first two terms of each have to multiply together to get us the first term of the quadratic. And in this case, we have a lead coefficient of one. The only things that we can multiply together are x and x. And then we decided already because we've done our math and we, we checked, um, we know that one and negative four are the numbers that we have to go. So we're just going to plug those in. So plus one and minus four. So this is the factored form. This is, this is what we're trying to find for our solution. But now if we're, we want to check to make sure that we did it correctly, uh, make sure that we have it in the right form. If we multiply this together, we should come back with the original equation. So if we say x times x, that is x squared. And then we say x times negative 4, that's negative 4x. And then we can say 1 times x, that's x. And 1 times negative 4, that's negative 4. Last thing we have, we can combine our like terms. We had, so we finish with x squared, negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3x and minus 4. So we see that the original that we started with is the same. So then this is the factor form, x plus 1 times x minus 4. And we have another example. 
that we can work with. Uh, we know that it's a quadratic and we want to get it in factored form. So the first one's kind of easy because we want to have two numbers that multiply together to get us to r squared. And in this case, we have a lead coefficient of one. It can only be r and r. Now, the next one is a little bit uh, more tricky because we need to have two numbers that multiply together to negative 156 and add together to 1. So we could try negative uh, 56 and 1. If we multiply those together, that is negative 56. So that works. But if we add them together, that's equal to negative 55. Negative 55 is nowhere near 1. So when we have such a small uh, coefficient on our middle term, that means that the numbers that multiply together to negative 56 have to be close to each other in proximity. So instead of negative 56 and 1, I'm going to try 8. And I need it to be negative, so I'm going to try 8 and negative 7 because I need that. When I multiply them, they have to be negative 56. So 8 times negative 7 is negative 56. And 8 plus negative 7, if we add those together, that is 1. All right, so that works because it gives me 1 here by adding, and multiplication gets me negative 56. So I can substitute these values in. We have a positive 8. And then we have a minus 7. Um, the other thing that we can notice is because it's a positive 1, the larger number needs to be positive. So 8's a little bit bigger than 7. So if 8's positive and 7's negative, that's going to leave our whatever we're finished with as a positive. And then we can check our work just to make sure that we did it correct. So we distribute r times r is r squared. Uh, r times negative 7 is negative 7r. Seven 8 times r is positive 8r. And 8 times negative 7 is negative 56. So then we have our middle terms that we can combine. And we finish with r squared minus, no, that's going to be plus because we have a positive 8 and a minus 7. So that's plus 1r and then minus 56. And what our check here, what we checked matches what we had at the beginning. And so we did, we have it in the right factored form.